So in this feature video, you'll find a uh, biologist from Biodiversity Research Institute catching, sampling, and banding common loons in uh, the range of lakes area of, of Maine. The question that you may think of is why are we doing this? Does it hurt the birds? I think that those are very important topics and we consider the individual loon as an individual. We treat it that way and we're very concerned with its safety and our safety. Uh, we've captured and banded and sampled over 3,000 loons. Some of the findings that we have developed in the Range of the Lakes area that you will see again in this video um, show us that mercury that's deposited from the air falling on the lakes and landscape is high enough or great enough to cause adverse impacts of behavior, reproduction, and survival of adult common loons and their young. But in the end, what happens with loons with high mercury levels, they do not sit on their eggs at their nest like they should. Uh, they're more lethargic, so they don't have the high energy behaviors uh, like you would expect. And in the end, they produce fewer young. My name is Michael Chickering. I work for Biodiversity Research Institute, at, and we're located at Agora, Maine, as uh, one of the field biologists for working with loons. Uh, right now, we're in Wilson's Mills, Maine. We'll be heading out on Lake Aziskahas tonight to try to capture some loons. We're going to get to the territory, which we've been monitoring all summer long, and. When we, when we arrive there, I have a general idea of where the loons are going to be. We'll, we'll probably spend anywhere from five minutes to upwards of an hour looking for the birds by use of a, a million candle power spotlight and binoculars. And uh, once we find them, we will we'll start approaching the bird in the boat, uh, traveling at a slow speed. We'll, we'll get it so the bird's about three or four feet off this side of the boat. And we have a large salmon net that we use that we, we scoop the bird up, bring it in the boat, and uh, we'll start the work up from there. When we're working them up, there's several measurements we take, including the left and right tarsus measurement, which is a, the measurement, if you pictured, pictured your ankle, the measurement of, your ankle, of, of the loon's ankle. Right tarsus is 24.8. From, from there, uh, we, we will do some bill measurements, including the total length of the bill, the Coleman length of the bill, the depth and the width, if there's an overlap. Length, 85.3. After that, we move on to feathers. We, uh, we remove both the second secondaries off each wing uh, in the two center tail feathers. Once we've got all that done, we uh, will start to draw blood from, from the loon. Where, where we draw that again is from the ankle. There's a, a large artery, a large vein that runs across the knuckle. It gives us a good, good spot to access to be able to draw the blood. When, when we're drawing the blood, we, uh, we take a, you know, several vials of it for different tests, including mercury, lead, Taking uh, tissues from loons uh, is an important component of, of what we do and why we capture the birds. The blood provides us a way of looking at contaminants and other environmental health issues. Um, blood, in particular, we're able to determine the levels of mercury in the uh, bodies of these birds. Feathers provide us another way of looking at mercury over time. So taking blood and feathers um, really provides us a way to examine the health of the bird and the loons provide a good indication of mercury loads in the fish in the lake and the same, those are the same fish that we all eat. One of the big things that we, we look for when we capture them is uh, the mercury level in the blood and the feathers. 
the, the mercury level through the blood gives us an idea of the, the level in the lake. Uh, and the, through the feathers, it gives us an idea of the mercury level in their wintering grounds. Um, from there, you know, if the bird's unbanded, we, we put co the colored leg bands and this federal ID band on it. If it's, if it's already banded, you will take a weight and release it. And if it's not banded, we weigh it and then release it. When we have the bird in hand, we, we try to have the, t the head wrapped in a towel at all times. Due, due to the fact that the, the bill of a loon is, is fairly sharp. And unlike most birds, if they, if they start, if they get, they get their head loose, they'll, and they, you have eyes around, they'll target eyes or target your face, so they're fairly dangerous to work with. Um, well, so when we release them, we have still the towel on the head. We have one person lift the body up, set it in the water, and release the feet while still holding on to the chest and the wings. We remove the towel and slowly remove our hands from the body. And what that does, it allows the bird to figure out, okay, I'm back in the water, and now, you know, now it can swim off or dive or do whatever it wants to do.